very low down, tired, and on the downbeat. Push back your first five rows as Louis Jarvis steps to the mic to sing Texas and Pacific. <laughs> of the Chattanooga Choo Choo, the Rock Island, the Missouri Pacific, the Northern Pacific, the Southern Pacific, the New York Central, the B&O, and the C&O, and the IC, and the Santa Fe. You just got to take a ride on the TP, about half an hour to be specific. Cobb Town's just a short way, heading southwest on the Texas and Pacific. Big wheels clacking around, and all the sights that are terrific. I'm West Texas bound, say Mr. Porter, I've wired my gal, she's waiting in El Paso for me, say Mr. Porter, there's pickles no left, my Stetson needs a dusting and my pants need a press, I guess I'll have to find a half to tip the Porter, 15 minutes he says, when I arrive we'll take a trip across the border, honeymoon in Juarez, cost a TP special, gets me there and much less. I've wired my gal, she's waiting in El Paso for me. Say, Mr. Porter, that's pickles no less. My Stetson needs a dusting and my pants need a press. I guess I'll have to find a half to tip the Porter. Fifteen minutes, he says. When I arrive, we'll take a trip across the border. Honeymoon in Juarez, cost the TP special, me there and much less. Texas and Pacific is the road for me. Well, when it's a sweet gal he's singing about, Louis Jarvis does up the package in a bright red bow, especially when it's all for the love of Lil. <laughs> in my jeans feeling like a man of means I give up all those other queens all for the love of Lil no more nights at sloppy joes no more betting on the nose I give up all my fancy clothes all for the love of Lil every night when all the boys congregate to have a ball although they should have called I won't pay no mind at all no more jiving round the town, no more acting like a clown, cause I'm gonna settle down, all for the love of Lil. <laughs> Got 
some money in my jeans Feeling like a man of means I give up all those other queens All for the love of Lil No more nights at Sloppy Joe's No more betting on the nose I give up all my fancy clothes All for the love of Lil Every night when all the boys Congregate to have a vote They should all I won't pay no mind at all No more jiving round the town No more acting like a clown Jack, I'm gonna settle down All by the love of them Get set for the fastest instrumental you ever heard the new Louis Jarvis arrangement of D by Bo Bill. Hey, Joe. Call down and have Lewis' car ready. His father's dying, and we've got to get out there right away. Well, how does it look? Gosh, we're almost there. Well, relax, honey, Carter. You're about as nervous as a newborn kid. Going to New York. Riding in an airplane for the first time. Who would be? Well, me for New York and a job. Boy, it's a good thing someone else is paying these freight charges. Yes. That's very kind of Mr. Jarvis. Yes, you know, I can't understand why an old man like Jarvis wants to see you before he dies. Don't talk that way. He's just sick, that's all. Besides, I've never seen him before. Well, maybe he'll leave you something in his will. Now, June, he happens to have been a friend of my mother's. Well, I don't care whose friend he was, as long as we get to New York. So he had a crush on your mother, huh? Yes. They were very much in love. Mother told me the story over and over again. What happened? Well, it started in a little cafe in New Orleans. About 30 years ago. Mother was a singer. Never, never set me free. For this night is heavenly. So tonight, be tender to me. Darling, I think you're wonderful. You've said that before, Mr. Jarvis. I know that, but I didn't say I wanted to take you to New York. New York? Yes, of course. I've been looking for a singing partner, and I think you're it. You mean you want me to go to New York? Of course. You've heard of me, haven't you? I'm Skylar Jarvis. Oh, of course I've heard of you, Mr. Jarvis. Oh, but I can never be good enough to... Ah, oh, let me be the judge of that. You see, my show opens in five weeks, and I'd like to have you with me. Are you coming? Mr. Jarvis. Well? I think you're wonderful. And did she go to New York? That very night. And there were never two happier people. In New York, Mother had to have an audition before the producer of the show. this show, but this is carrying things too far. That girl can't sing. She's wonderful. She's got everything. There's all the right things. be tender to me In your arms let me find ecstasy She couldn't sing.
trunk. That's very beautiful. That's pretty. Don't be nervous. Tonight, be tender to me. For tonight is tomorrow's memory. Tonight, be tender to me. In your arms, let me find ecstasy. I dream in your soft caress. In your eyes, I see my paradise. Never, never set me free, for this night is heavenly. So tonight, be tender to me. Mr. Rippey. I told you she had everything. The contract's yours with 500 a week. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful. They were a great success together. Did they get married? No. That's the sad part of it. What happened? My grandmother heard about my success. She rushed to New York and proceeded to marry Mother off to the richest man she could find. She cut Jarvis out, huh? Yes. Mother married Dad. He was very rich then. But the crash took care of them. I guess Mother never forgot Skylar Jarvis. You know, he must have felt the same way. And now he wants to see you before he dies. Gosh, I hope we get there in time. Well, that might be a lesson for you. What do you mean? Well, just don't go falling for every nice guy you meet. Or before you know it, you'll end up with a broken heart. Don't worry, Jim. I can take care of myself. I wonder. You're looking better today, Mr. Jarvis. Sounds like the name of a play, Doc. What's that, sir? No time for comedy. Yes, sir. The lights are coming up. The last time, Doc. The final curtain about to fall. Yes, sir. I've had my fun. Now it's time for me to move on and make ready for the next act. That's your fine boy, Louis, Mr. Jarvis. Yeah. Takes after me, Doc. Great entertainer. A little headstrong, but I was that way once. But he'll grow out of it when the right girl comes along to look after him. Something I never had. But I've taken care of all that in my will. Yes. And I've looked after you in my will, too, Doc. Thank you kindly, Mr. Jarvis. But all I want to do is to take care of you and your boy. I knew I could depend on you, doll. Oh, Mr. Jarvis! Look in the drawer there. And get out that envelope. And always keep it safe for me. I'll do that, Mr. Jarvis. I know that I could depend upon you, Doc. There ain't many people that I can trust. That's just kind of a check on something that I want done. Yes, sir. I want you to take that to somebody that can trust. And open it four weeks after I'm gone. I'll do that, Mr. Jarvis. Thank you, Doc. And now... Go bring in my lawyer and his secretary. I want to make out my will. Yes, sir. It's sure taken the old man a long time to draw his last breath. Well, you wouldn't want him to die before he makes out his will, would you? Don't worry about that. I've got that fixed, too. If he doesn't write one, I'll do it for him. Isn't that a little risky? Are you kidding? With all the dough he's got, why, nothing is too risky. And I'm the only one that knows anything about his investments. Well, it certainly sounds cozy. Darling, 
You and I are going to be sitting on top of the world. And I'm with you all the way. Pardon me, sir. How is it, Alf? Bad, Mr. Talbot. Mighty bad. He asked for you and Miss Rusty, sir. He wants to make out his will. Okay, Doc. Thanks. That's it. Grab your little typewriter and let's go. Oh, by the way, that Carter girl will be at the airport in an hour and a half. What did he want with her? I don't know. Wanted to see her before he died. Guess he's losing his mind, too. She must be five feet, five inches, dark brown hair. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jobs, sign us. Uh, there may not be much time left. I think we have all the essentials there. Great. Yeah, it's good enough. Didn't want a doctor, but I guess I'll have to call one now to sign the death certificate. That's right. Sorry, Louis. What, I'm too late? I'm afraid. We're praying for him. Thanks, Tara. Fortunately, uh, he managed to make his will in time. All right, now, fill that out exactly right. And I'll get the signature fixed later. Listen, don't worry. A mistake would be too expensive now. Hmm. I've got to get out to that airport to head off that Carter girl. Go ahead. I'll have this finished by the time you get back. Okay, Rusty. Good. Miss Carter? That's right. I'm uh, Henry Talbot, uh, Mr. Jarvis's lawyer. How do you do? Fine. This is my friend, June. Pleased How to meet you? you. I'm sorry, Miss Carter. You had to arrive too late. You mean he's... Well, I'm afraid so. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did so want to meet Mr. Jarvis. Well, we did all we could for him, but it was of no use. I'm sorry you had to make the trip for nothing. Oh, that's all right. We were going to... Oh, it's a pity, Mr. Talbert, but it was nice of Mr. Jarvis to pay our way here. But yeah. now... I understand. I knew you'd need some money to get back. Oh, but we, we don't really... Oh, thank you, Mr. Talbert. Well, that ought to do it. I have some things to do now, and I'll hurry along. Uh, there's a plane out in about an hour. Oh, that's all right. We decided to stay a couple of days and see the sights. Well, that I wouldn't advise. You know, New York's no place for two young girls. Oh, we'll manage. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. And goodbye to you, miss. Goodbye. Well, that's hospitality for you. He didn't seem to want us around, did he? Not from where I stand. June, you really shouldn't have taken that money. Well, honey, I can see you're not experienced in the ways of the world. I'll pay our first month's rent. Oh, come on, let's go. And entrust unto him the care of my son. To my dear son, Louis, the remainder of my estate, with the hope that he use it wisely, to ensure that I make one provision, that within 30 days of my death, he marries the girl who is probably even now by his side. The girl he is to marry fit this description and a quarter inches. Waist 22, thigh 19, ankle 8, hips 35, bust 32. Should he fail to comply with this wish, this will be turned over to Henry Talbot, who in turn will donate the money to various charitable institutions. Sign, Skylar H. Jobs. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the will. I don't get it. Neither do I. Well, Louis, looks like your father had to have his little game. But that description fits Rusty to a T. Yeah. I was thinking of that when I read the will. You know, your father had a great deal of respect for Rusty. Nobody's going to tell me who to marry. I don't love Rusty. But you could learn to love me, darling. I can't afford the lesson. Now, now, you don't have to rush into things. You have over four weeks. I don't care if I've got four years. I'll decide when and who to marry. Remember the new show, though, Lloyd. The backing isn't too sound, and we sure could use some of that cabbage. I'll find a backing for the show, all right, if I have to sell oranges on the street corners. Well, darling, you've only got a month. Come on, Rusty. 
We've got work to do. Can you beat that? Yeah. Tough break, Louis. That sure is some wife your father picked out for you. I thought he had better taste than that. You figure it out. Tell me what we're going to do now. That's the $64 question. Can the blues is something that just don't exist. You can take it from me. The blues is something that just don't exist. Except in a heart with the blues is you get when you've got nothing, no nothing. So tell me if you've got nothing, how can you have and call the blues? The blues ain't nothing, ain't nothing at all, but an uneasy state of mind. The blues ain't nothing, oh, nothing at all. But a hungry cat without a dime. The blues is something you get when you've got nothing. No, nothing. So tell me if you've got nothing. How can you have something called the blues? Now when there's snow upon the ground and you've got holes in your shoes, every time you hear from home the same old bad news, nothing's going right, everything is going wrong, then just remember this song, the blues ain't nothing, the blues ain't nothing at all. Didn't you say you knew this Lewis Jarvis? Yes, but we only met once, when his father brought him to my mother's funeral. I was only 12 then. Well, uh, why don't you go over to ask him about a job? Oh, no. He wouldn't remember me. I bet he'd like to renew an old acquaintance. Don't be silly, Jim. Well, one of us better click real soon. After all, I weigh exactly, and I do not wish to lose my glamour. <laughs> Just a little patience, June, please. Hey, stop it. You're beginning to sound exactly like me. As you probably know, this is our last broadcast of the season. But don't fear, children. We'll all be back with you mighty soon. Now, right after Louie and the gang get through with that old favorite, the green grass grew all around, We'll have an announcement of special interest to all of you. So stay with us, will you? Now give us a downbeat, Louie. We're all ready to sing along with you. There was a hole. There was a hole. The prettiest little hole. The little hole. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. Now the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around. And in that hole. And in that hole. There was some dirt. There was some dirt. The richest dirt. The richest dirt. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. Now the dirt in the hole and the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around and in that dirt, and in that dirt, there was some roots. There was some roots. The prettiest little roots. The prettiest little roots. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. Now the roots and the dirt and the dirt in the hole and the hole in the ground. The green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around and on those roots, and on those roots, there grew a little tree. The prettiest little tree. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. Now the tree on the roots and the roots and the dirt and the dirt and the hole and the hole and the ground. The green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around. And on that tree, and on that tree, there grew a little limb. The cutest little limb. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. 
Now the limb on the tree and the tree on the roots and the roots and the dirt and the dirt and the hole and the hole and the ground. The green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around. And on that limb, and on that limb, there was a little nest. There was a little nest. The prettiest little, prettiest little nest. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. Now the nest on the limb and the limb on the tree and the tree on the roots and the roots and the dirt and the dirt and the hole and the hole and the ground. The green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around. And in that nest, in that nest, there was a little egg. There was a little egg. The prettiest little egg. The prettiest little bird. The prettiest little bird. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. Now the bird and the egg and the egg and the nest and the nest on the limb and the limb on the tree and the tree on the roots and the roots and the dirt and the dirt and the hole and the hole and the ground. The green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around. And on that bird, and on that bird, there was some feathers, prettiest little feathers that you ever did see. Now the feathers on the bird and the bird and the egg and the egg and the nest and the nest on the limb and the limb on the tree and the tree. On the roots and the roots and the dirt and the dirt and the hole and the hole and the ground. The green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's that special announcement I promised. You might call it the chance of a lifetime, but here's Sam Adams, that great press agent, to tell you all about it. Thank you, Hal. Well, folks, it's just this. As you've all probably read, Louis Jarvis is producing his own Broadway show. The female lead is still open. We're beginning a beauty and talent contest to discover the girl who play the lead. Miss Broadway will have to be a true beauty because we've got the measurements that she must fit. You're all welcome to try out. The contest will be held each afternoon at 238 Vine Street in St. Clair, New York, at the Jarvis Mansion, and we suggest that you come in your bathing suits to bring out the uh, highlights. Good luck to all of you, and may the best one win. Well, we're in. Oh, sure. They're just waiting for us. Wow, I'm no painting beauty, but I've seen worse. But you'll be okay, honey. No, thanks, June. I'd rather work for a living, not walk around in a bathing suit. But, honey, this is a part for a big Broadway show. Then why don't they hold auditions instead of having beauty contests? Well, just don't ask questions. All I know is you got to have more than looks to get in a big Broadway show, and I'm going to start rehearsing right now. So sit back, relax, and watch me. I'm going to play a reckless I promised myself long ago that I'd never open my heart again. But since I met you, I've changed completely. That promise will never hold true. Cause I've tossed my heart in the ring again and all over. I've changed completely. I've lived in a shell all by myself until you washed me ashore. A kiss. And the touch of your hand was all that was needed to open the door. So now that you've shown me 
the way and you've made me open my heart again I'm glad I met you I've changed completely myself long ago but I've never opened my heart again but I'm glad I met you I've changed completely that you compared to you. Oh, it just takes a little hard work, honey. And you're going to start rehearsing right now. While the girls are getting ready, Sam, I'd like to run over a couple of numbers. You know we're going to rehearsal tomorrow. Okay, Lloyd, go right ahead. All right, fellas, let's get together now. Latch on to this one. This is Wham Sam. This will be the opening of the show. Here we go. <laughs> Dig them gams, mellow like corn and country ham, slender and round and built from the ground. Wham, Sam, dig them gams. Wham, Sam, it ain't no flam. The chicks got props like she's from Bam, mellow and fine and so divine. Wham, Sam, dig them gams. Now I've been around and seen some legs, skinny one, fat one, some fine pig. I like a chick that's built like her, soft and mellow like fine. And fox fur. Wham, Sam, dig them gams. Out of this world like berry jam. Cool as a fool who's on the lamb. Wham, Sam, dig them gams. <laughs> Some fine pigs, fat ones, skinny ones, like her, soft and mellow like fine fox fur. Wham, Sam, dig them gams. Out of this world like berry jam, cool as a fool who's on the lamb. Wham, Sam, dig them gams. Say, Lloyd, the girls are dressed and waiting. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. Let them sit around and rest now. We got to do it right. Girls, just sit around and be calm and pay attention to this number. This is a number on how to understand women. There's a whole lot of talk around town about the way you can yourself. About the way you can yourself You jiving everybody in town But baby, 
I know what you're putting down. Everybody's trying to dig you, baby. Everybody but me. Everybody's trying to dig you. Everybody but me. You fooling everybody in town, but baby, I know what you're putting down. You went out last night to a dinner, a show, and a dance. Yes, you went out last night to a dinner, show, and a dance. You must have been a perfect clown, but baby, I know what you're putting down. Beautiful, but you're just a little too tall. Thanks for coming out. Miss Ambrosia Jenkins. Bus 34. Waist 23 and 3 quarters. Hips 35. Sorry, miss. Listen to lies. The cornflower. Six and three quarters. Sorry, miss. That's a little too large. Miss Hell on Wheels. Hips, 36. Waist, 25 and a half. Fine. I'm sorry, miss. You just won't do it. Well, Louis, it looks pretty good here. There's no use, Sam, but Rusty could fit that description. You're not giving up on it. Well, I'm ready to. Then you want to marry Rusty? Well, I'm here. I guess I have to go along with you. Look, Lloyd, two weeks left to do something. Well, the backing of the show is all set. The rehearsals are good. And it needs a little brushing up, but I'll take care of that. Yeah, I know, but you can't depend on those things. And some of your father's money certainly would put us ship shape. Well, Sam, I'm not going to marry that dame. Look, Dragarina Blues. Man, for a million bucks, I'd almost do it myself. The nudist column. Are you kidding? Yeah. Well, I guess we have to just keep looking. Okay, bus 34. Weight 24. Hips 30. I'm very sorry, miss, but 
You didn't quite make it. Thanks for coming out. Plus 36. Waist 32. Hip up. <coughs> Thank you, Miss. It's awful nice of you to come out. Well, it was a good idea. But it didn't work. So what's the million bucks? You're right. Just as long as you have it. What this young lady wants. Okay, go ahead. Could I help you, miss? I thought I'd try. Well, what took you so long to get here? Well, I don't particularly like walking around in bathing suits. But when you have to eat every day, I guess you just have to forget a few things your mother told you. <laughs> it really isn't that bad, I assure you. Do you have a bathing suit? Oh, yes, I have one on. Under this. Okay, well, get to the... I'm terribly sorry, Angel. Better luck next time. Do you think I could speak to Mr. Jarvis? Lord? Sure. Go ahead. He needs something to cheer him up anyhow. Jarvis? Mr. Jarvis? Oh, hello! Mr. Jarvis, I'm Honey Carter. Well, what do you know? You don't fit in it, but you sure get my vote for Miss Broadway. Thank you. You know, you look familiar. Well, since I ought to, I guess I can't say you're getting fresh. You mean to say I really do know you? Oh, then you've forgotten. Well, let me think now. Your father would have remembered. Oh, Dad? He brought you to my mother's funeral. Oh, I know now. You're a lovely Lynn's daughter. So I've been told. Well, what do you know? Well, isn't that wonderful? The last time I saw you, you were only... Twelve. Twelve, that's right. And I had on my first pair of long pants. So good enough. Before you start saying old Lang Syne, we have got to see a couple of angels about some money tonight, remember? This is the only angel I'm going to see tonight. Take care of it, Sam. Whatever you say, Louis. I've got a date with Honey to talk over old times in the French cafe, okay? Okay. You know, this old cafe in New Orleans, this is where you met your mother, you know. You used to be them of the golden days. He must have been a sweet old man. What you doing in New York? What you working at? Well, if working is looking for a job, then I'm hard at work. No luck? Almost a month now. I was beginning to get a little desperate. That's how I decided to parade around the bathing suit. And a nice parade or two, if I may say so. Thank you. What do you do, sing? I try to. If you're half as good as your mother was, you're sensational. I guess I'm passable. But I'm beginning to doubt even that. Well, what about coming down tomorrow for an audition? I'd love to, Louie. But I don't think I fit your measurements. That's another thing. I'd hire you anyway, just to stand around and look gorgeous. Oh, you're sweet, Louie. That goes double, darling. I can see why Papa's so crazy about your mother. The feeling was mutual. Remember? I sure do. Let's dance, Louie. Well, since I have no other excuse to hold you in my arms, under one condition. What's that? That you come to rehearsal tomorrow. All right. I'll be there. The deal is real. <laughs>
let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Don't care if you're young or old. Get together and let the good times roll. Don't sit there mumbling and talking trash. If you want to have a ball, you got to go out and spend some cash. And let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Don't care if you're young or old. Get together and let the good times roll. Hey, Mr. Landlord, lock up all the doors. When the police comes around, tell him the joint is closed. And let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Don't care if you're young or old. Get together, let the good times roll. Hey, y'all, tell everybody, Mr. Jordan's in town. I got a dollar and a quarter, and I'm just ran the clown. But don't let nobody play me cheap. I got. Fifty cents more that I'm gonna keep. So let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Don't care if you're young or old. Get together and let the good times roll. Yeah, no matter whether it's rainy weather. Gotta stick together, so get yourself under control and go out and get together. And let the good times roll. Wow, Sam Dick, this guy. These are new costumes, Louie. How do you like them? Sam, they're killer. I'm telling you, they're really fine. Come on, girls, let's get together with this next two: Reef Petit and Gone. <laughs> Short and she isn't too tall. She's in the groove and right on the ball, cause she's reef, petite, and gone. Now, what a babe, she's the tops. When we go out, they don't need no traffic cops. One look at her and the traffic stops, cause she's reef, petite, and gone. Now, I could have my pick, you know, cause I was ready to go. But this chick's so mighty fine, she got me all tied up like a ball of twine. When I do things, I do them right. I won't ever let my baby out of my sight. We'll tie the knot and tie it tight. Cause she's reef, petite, and gone. Now that chick has changed my attitude. Whenever I gaze on her pussy too. I tell you, Jack, she's so mighty fine. She got me all tied up like a ball of twine. Those other chicks just leave me cold. You can't compare brass with 14 karat gold. After they made her, they broke the mold. Cause she's reef, petite, and gone. Of 
little girl. That was wonderful. Just a wee bit more rehearsal and you'll have it perfect. Sam, take the girls out and let them change their costume. Okay. Hit them, girls. Ah, that's honey. How are you, Sugar? I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Louie. I want you to meet a friend of mine, June. She's a singer. Say, June. Uh, yes, Mr. Jarvis. How do you do? Honey tells me you can sing. Oh, could be. Well, what would you like to sing? Oh, uh, you got me where you want me. Uh, do you mean it? Uh-huh. Fellas, you know that. You've got me where you want me. You've got me so I can. I always thought I'd know when to stop or go when it came to love. Now that I find you love me, I'll follow anywhere. Cause you've got me where you want me, baby. And I don't care. Hold it right there, fellas. Hold it right there. What's the matter? Can't you do something else? Yes, I can sing. You can sing? And I can dance. Now, that should be good. Oh, Heathcliff! Oh, Heathcliff! Oh, not Heathcliff. Oh, Heathcliff. Oh, hold it right there, fellas. I'll follow anywhere. Cause you got me where you want me, baby. Wonderful, June. That is very good, very good. Now, if you see Sam sitting over there, I think he'll get you a contract. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jarvis. Now, that's nice. Oh, Sam. Yeah? Mr. Jarvis, he said you'd give me a contract. I certainly will. I heard your song, June, and it's wonderful. Oh, thank you. I'll have the contract made up for you immediately so you can sign it before you leave. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay. Will you excuse me for a moment? I have a very important phone call to make. Oh, yes. I'll be right back, though. Okay. Oh, honey, darling, come here just a moment. I'd like for you to do your little number now. I want you to sit these guys on their ear. You know that tune you rehearsed? I'd gladly do it again. Here we go, fellas. Yes. Now, look, Mr. Baxter. Somebody gave you a bum steer. The show is supposed to open in three days. Oh, yes, I understand that. But, Mr. Bax, you just can't back out on us now. Yes. Y you see, without your 10000 we just can't open. Oh, Mr. Baxter. Yes. Yes, I understand that. All right, Mr. Baxter. Thank you. Goodbye, sir. Lloyd, come here. I've got to talk to you. What's the matter, Sam? Baxter. Somebody put a bug in his bonnet and he's backed out. But he can't do that. Yeah, that's what I said. But it's his checkbook. That means the show can't open day after tomorrow. If ever. And just think, all these kids have worked so hard. There's always Rusty, though. Oh, I'd nearly forgotten about her. <laughs> yeah, so I noticed. How much time have we got left? Not much. This is the last day. Well, I guess we'll have to go to Talbot's office. Say, you don't mean you're going to... No, 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 no. I don't know what I'm going to do, but you take the girls out to lunch, and I'll see you a little bit later on. Okay, but look, please, don't do anything rash, will you? I'll try not to. Okay, now. <laughs> okay. That was Baxter. Yeah, what did he want? Oh, uh, he just wanted to thank me for tipping him off on the show before he lost his shirt on it. Very nice move, darling. Well, that ought to set Louie going. You know, he'd give anything to get that show on. Rusty, you're almost surprised. I don't know. Louis hasn't been very attentive. Well, he'd better start and in a hurry, because today is the last day. Then I start giving the money away to charity. Can't you get anything out of that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a few pennies. But that's not the idea. I'll marry you. Then we'll have a steady income from here on out. Oh, hello, Louie. Hi, Rusty. That's the way it ought to be. Sure, Louie. But I don't like what I see. Oh, now, don't be a fool. If I didn't need the money, I wouldn't come here at all. Come on, now, let's be sensible. That's what I'm trying to do. All right, then do it. Yeah? Marry Rusty and collect the dough. But I'm in love with somebody else. So what? You're going to let that stand in the way of you and a million bucks? Marry Rusty, then we get a quick divorce and a settlement. Why, wait a you... minute, wait a minute. I don't, I don't like to do that. that. Yes. 
I have your best interest at heart. I doubt that. You mean to call me a crook? Something like that. I have nothing more to say. It's about time. You always do, eh? I'd be a lot sorry you're married to you. Henry Calvin's office. Yes, he is. Hello? Oh, hi. That's right. Night at 9 o'clock, Mr. Jarvis. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Jarvis wanted it that way. That was Dolph. Wants us over to the house tonight at 9. So that was your father's last wish. Okay, I'll be there. And thanks for helping me, Talbot. I'll remember you in my will. Stupid. What's this about Dolph? I don't too. Maybe they suspect something. No, no, no. How could they? They've broken down servant, throw a wrench in the works now. Don't you worry about that. So the show's closing. What about it? But Louis worked so hard. He had his heart and soul in it. Oh, there'll be other shows. Not for me, Jim. I've had enough. Honey, you gotta have understanding and patience in this business. But I can't take it, Jim. <sighs> Maybe it's a, a guy and not the show that's causing all this trouble. Maybe it is. Oh, dude. Oh. To ensure that I make one provision, that within 30 days, he marries a girl who is probably even now beside him. Now, wait a minute. We've heard all that before. This is the list, and it's dated before the one that you read. Can I see it? Sure. Now, listen, remember this. I'm the lawyer in this family, Mr. Jerome. Lieutenant Jerome, of the police. May I continue? Certainly. The girl who fits this description, weighs 24, size 19 and a half, ankle 8 and a half, height 5 feet 5 inches, hair dark brown. Say, listen, those are the measurements we were looking for. Something fishy. Keep right on, Lieutenant. Should there be any difficulty in finding this girl, I suggest that you locate the daughter of the former Lovey Lynn, namely, Honey Carter. Honey Carter? Hold it, you two. I thought that signature in the world of yours was a pony. Come on down to the headquarters. We got some questions that need some answers. Thanks, Lieutenant. That's all right, Dolph. It's been a pleasure. So you had it fixed, Dolph, eh? Yes, sir, Mr. Lewis. Where your father was always talking about that lovely Lynn and her daughter, I figured he kind of wanted you to marry this Honey Carter. But when you didn't, no, there was something wrong. Good boy, doll. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Adams. Today, when I opened the envelope that Mr. Jarvis gave me, I could see right off when I saw it was a copy of the will that something was wrong. Lately, I thought your father kind of felt that Mr. Talbot wasn't up to no good. I suspect it was sort of a test to protect you. And so I figured I'd better have the lieutenant read it, just in case. He used to play poker with Dad. Is that right? Yes, and he still the winning hand that time. <laughs> you know, uh, shouldn't I get married right away? I think you do. Well, Sam, see, can you dig up a justice of peace? I'll find honey. Uh -huh. Hey, and Sam, get the cast together. The show must go on. Hey, boy, don't you harm that bird, don't you dare to try. Start releasing that chicken or you'll get a licking, that chick's too young to fry. Hey, boy, better take my word, here's the reason why. You gotta feed her up steady till she gets ready. That chick's too young to fry. Take her back in the barnyard. Let her go, just turn her loose. Way out there in the barnyard. Or she'll grow up for better use. Hey, boy, 
There'll come a time someday by and by She'll be ready for frying So stop your crying That chick's too young to fry Hey boy, there'll come a time someday by and by Start releasing that chicken or you get a lickin' that chick's too young to fry. Hey boy, better take my word, here's the reason why. Gotta feed her up steady till she gets ready, that chick's too young to fry. Take her back in the barnyard, let her go, then turn her loose way out there in the barnyard. You grow up for better use, hey boy. There'll come a time someday by and by. She'll be ready for frying, so stop your crying. That chick's too young to fry. Get away, stay away, come back another day. That chick's too young to fry. Just like a woman, ain't that just like a woman? Ain't that just like a woman? They'll do it every time. Lot took his wife to the corner store to get her malted. She couldn't mind her business, boy, did she get salted? Ain't that just like a woman? Ain't that just like a woman? Ain't that just like a woman? They'll do it every time. They sure will. Samson thought Delilah was on the square Till one night she clipped him for all his hair Ain't that just like a woman Ain't that just like a woman Ain't that just like a woman They'll do it every time books you've learned that Nero fiddled while Rome was burned ain't that just like a woman ain't that just like a woman ain't that just like a woman they'll do it every time Marie Antoinette met those hungry cats at the gate they were crying for bread she said let them eat cake ain't that just like a woman ain't that just like a woman ain't just like a woman they'll do it every time they sure will you can buy a woman clothes and give her money on the side No matter what you do, they ain't never satisfied Ain't that just like a woman? Ain't that just like a woman? Ain't that just like a woman? They'll do it every time A guy with gold, don't care if he's young or old, it's a sense you're barking up the wrong tree. But if you want to get your kicks from a boy who knows the tricks, if it's love you want, baby, that's me. If you want a guy with class who's way above the mass, well, I'm not the right person, obviously. But if you want to get that glow from a cat that's in the know, if it's love you want, baby, that's me. So take your time and think it over. Don't do anything that's rash. Don't go for a guy with flash. Cause love will last longer than cash. If you want a guy with class who's way above the mass, I'm not the right type, I must agree. But if you feel like getting sent from a truly righteous gent, if it's love you want, baby, that's me. If it's love you want, baby, that's me. 